welcome to all love and faith saints and to all our precious online visitors to the platform, to all our regular members online on the platform, we give God thanks for you. Special mention must be made tonight for our pastors, pastors Ricardo um, Garrick and Pastor Lolet Garrick, who stood in leadership in our absence. We thank you, sir and madam. We thank our precious leadership team, our elders, deacons, Amen. who stood in the gap and make things work. We are so grateful to God for your leadership and for your prayers. We thank God for you. Now, let us pray. Father, you're gracious to us. We praise your holy name. Father, we speak as you speak, for your mercy endure it forever. Today, Lord, you are speaking to us through your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have appointed here of all things and through whom you have made the universe. The one of whom it is written that the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Him of whom it is also written that after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven so that he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. We applaud the name of Jesus Christ. We say tonight your throne is forever established. It will last forever. We worship you. Righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom for you, O oh Lord, love righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of joy. Jesus, we allel you. We allel your holy name. Come by the power of your Holy Spirit tonight. Come and tabernacle with us. Come and break the bread of life to us tonight. Come and feed us, Lord God, for we need you. We need you in our lives. We need you in our church. We need you in our communities. We need you in our nation and in the nations of the earth. All eyes look to you now, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What a prayer. Amen. What a night we anticipate, mm -hmm. we look forward to as we share in this time of Bible study, the breaking of the bread by Galilee, the feeding of the 5,000 and more with the word of Almighty God, without which we are nothing. We need a word from you, Lord. We need to hear from you. Lord, there are so many words that are being spoken, mm. so many utterances that are being made, and so many are entering into the ears and hearts of our people, misguided words that are stout mm. and stubborn, words that are rebellious against God, our maker, and words that is misleading so many of the saints of God, but we need a word, a revelatory word, as Paul prayed in Ephesians, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, be opened, that we would know of the glorious riches towards us who believe. So tonight, here's another night. I have not yet heard the message from Pastor Garrix, but I'm sure it was riveting. I'm sure it was challenging. 
heart rending in a good way. And it has really set us up for a blessing as we obey the word of God. But I think it was ungiven as he had indicated them. And maybe there needs to be a part two and a part three. I don't know. And his availability. But we will follow the leading of the Lord. Tonight I want to look on a similar trend that we have been following. We have been focusing on uh, Exodus 30, the Bezalel company of spiritual craftsmen, skilled craftsmen, uh, those who are artisans in what they do, experts, and what guides and governs that, the need for the Holy Spirit's endowment to come upon the workers in those days and the need to come upon the Holy Spirit to come upon the workers in these days. And then the following week, we looked at Exodus chapter 25, that God instructed Moses to take a free will offering from the people. It must be conditioned and governed by certain prerequisites. It must be from the people. It was an offering to the Lord, and it was specifically given to erect the Lord's sanctuary. And it was the only time in recorded scripture and history, the best of our knowledge, that God had to call off the people's giving. It was uh, blessing, it was grace giving, it was a spirit of generosity. And my God, we pray for the same today, but mm -hmm. it will require the same obedience. Mm -hmm. The restrictions and requirement are the same, that our offering be given unto God for the raising up of his temple. Tonight here is a potent scripture that we could not close out this entire season and uh, spirit of giving without looking at the scripture. It is First Chronicles 29. When I first heard of it, I heard it read, I sat literally muted. I couldn't move or remove myself. I felt the tears streaming down my face because in that passage and in this passage that we're going to read tonight is a portion that tells us to whom does the wealth belong? To whom does the gold, the silver, and all this abundance we see around us belong? And as long as we settle that philosophy in our mind and have a clear understanding of that ideology of the purpose of our wealth, that it is to glorify God. And the more we give to him is the more he gives us that we can give to him and others and be liberated in our giving. So tonight, one profound principle before I even start reading this portion, First Chronicles 29, is this. David, now an old king, about to expire, literally you could say, in the departure launch of his time lent on earth to humanity, was about to depart. But he called his son, and you and I are admonished to do the same, our children, sons and daughters, and he gave him some instructions for lifelong living. And there are many of them. We're going to find them in First Chronicles and verse 20, and uh, the verses in chapter 29. But I want to go to something in chapter 28 that David said to his young son Solomon. And it is found in chapter 28 and verse 
8, 9, and 10. Look at these verse. So now I charge you, David talking to his son, in the sight of all Israel, he didn't do it secretly and privately, in the sight of all Israel, and the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, be careful, David said to his son, to follow all the commandments, all the commands of the Lord your God. Follow all of them, that you may possess this good land. You want to possess your land, your nation, inheritance, prosperity? Follow the commandments of the Lord, David says. And all the good commandments that the Lord has given in order to possess this land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. So one generation charging the next generation to charge the other generation, literally three generations, and it goes on and on and on. But he's not finished with him yet. Verse 9, and you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholeheartedness. Hmm? Acknowledge him, recognize him in all thy ways and serve him with wholeheartedness, total devotion, wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. Mm -mm. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Verse 10, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. My God, these verses alone, we could spend six months in a series. He, after charging him and reminding him that God has chosen him, you could say purpose, destiny, yes. assignment, mission is wrapped up in that. There's a father speaking to his son. One king to another. This sounds like we're in Proverbs 31. Wise instruction of a young king from both parents, mother and father. But then he clinched it by saying, and this was verse 10. Let's go to the end of verse 10 again. And here it is. Be strong and, and do, do the work. The work. Mm -mm. Love and faith. Be strong. Be strong. And do, and the, do work. the work. I learned from the book of Joshua, the first chapter, that when God says, be very courageous, do not turn to the left nor to the right. There's going to be some obstacles. <laughs> There's going to be some challenges. So he's telling you, take your knapsack. And in your knapsack, through the journeys of life, ensure you take courage with you. Thank You're going to need it. He didn't say everything about our warfare is going to be a bed of roads. So we can come back to First Chronicles and verse 8, 9, and 10. Some other time, I can assure you, we will. Now he gets into chapter 29. And I've never heard David like this before. Remember, David is known as the sweet psalmist of Israel. He cannot speak for lengthy periods without going into a song and taking his one of his many instruments with him to give glory and honor, to make melody and praise unto his God. Here is David in a significant portion of scripture, none like this before. He starts out, chapter 29, verse 1. The King David 
Then King David said to the entire multitude, he called them together. Hmm? It must have been a city assembly. And he is addressing his son Solomon, but in the hearing of the entire assembly, meaning the high priest was there, the other priests, those in the ministry, all the Levites, all the king's mighty men. He says, my son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, he knew that God mm -hmm. had chosen of all his children, this boy Solomon. Why? To just rule? No. To build him a house, a temple, mm -hmm. a sanctuary. This is a privileged position. This is a position of honor that a people can be called by the name of the Lord God to build him a house in whatever generation, in whatever state, in whatever period, in whatever Kairos moment, he has called you and I to build him a house for his name, for his glory, and for his honor. It has very little to do about us, but request and require our obedience in a generation, in a time, in a season, in a nation. Build me a house for my glory, for my honor. And so David started out. Look at what follows next. He says, who has chosen, whom the Lord has chosen, is young and inexperienced. These are two positives and two negatives. Thank God, because you're young, you're teachable. You're not bent and set in your ways. Mm -hmm. You are young, you're green. You need to be taught. You need to be obedient to God. And two, you don't know everything. You may have youthful exuberance. You may have muscles, muscular strength. You may have youthful exuberance going with you, sideburns, whiskers. Mm -hmm. Your muscles may be bulging through your chest. Ah, the pride of the girls. All of that is good to have all of those admiration. But youth, don't take your youth for granted. Don't abuse it. Don't let anyone abuse you. Don't sell out the pride of your youthfulness. Don't give away what God has given to you. That's a parable. That's a poem. And value your inexperience and seek the opportunity to build your house with wisdom. Furnish it with understanding and establish it with equity, with justice. So wisdom, knowledge, establish yourself. And he continues, the task is great. Put these three things together. Youthfulness, inexperience. However, the task, great. love and faith, mighty God in this hour, in this nation, at this time, the task, David asks, is there not a cause? God is reminding us tonight, the task is great. Because of that, many sacrifices. And he continues, because this palatial, these are not my words, this palatial structure, hmm? this palatial temple, this palatial structure is not for man, but for God. Can we just, these, this, just this, what words, what words are used right here in this line is pregnant with revelation. The task is great. You have youthfulness. You have inexperience. That's not, those are not negative. And this palatial structure brethren it's not for man it is for the glory of god 
Mm. It's not for my name, your name, our name. This stained glass windows, this dome, whatever shape, form, he requires and instructs. It is not for the glory of man, but for the glory of God. And it must be a palatial. Why palatial structure? Because the house of a great man is a great house only because of the greatness of the man that resides there. The great man that resides in this house is not us. All greatness, all power, all majesty, all authority. When somebody drives up at your gate, it must speak to and of the person that lives inside. You will see the color scheme that matters to them. You will see the plants. You will see replicas of the person who is on the inside. The greatness of God's house should display the greatness of the greatest God of all the universe. And the greatness is not just material things. Oh, so many other dimensions to the greatness of God must be experienced by the God who occupies. So David remind uh, Solomon, this house is palatial. The reason why it is palatial, it is the structure is not for man, but for God. Oh, that alone should keep us busy for the night. So David said, with all my resources, my God, all, not some of, mm. with all of my treasures, I have provided for the temple of my God. What is our lives purpose to provide, to facilitate, to bring about the necessity of the house, the work of our God. David said, as a king with enormous wealth, so many other kings pay tribute to him, so many other nations pay tribute to the greatest nation upon the face of the earth. He says, I have laid aside. So we know what David did with the treasures of his heart and life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we make the mistake as parents and we leave wealth and ambitious wills for our children and they kill each other by fighting to the debt before, over before, the remain. Before the burial. Sometimes before the parents goes under the ground. They but David laid up an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Oh God, as great men should lay up an inheritance hmm, for their children. But it's an inheritance of godliness, holiness. Let me make this point. A man who does not know the purpose of his wealth will abuse it. A man who does, doesn't know the purpose of wealth will definitely not enjoy it. Some people in this generation, their children don't know the purpose of wealth, the value of wealth. Mm. They think it is for them. And because they paid nothing to earn it, they waste it, they abuse it, and they squander it. Jesus. We need to teach our children the purpose of wealth and how to value whatever substance is left to them. Acknowledge God first. Does God need our wealth? No. Why then should we teach, preach, and encourage people to honor God with our wealth? It's because we need that wealth. God doesn't need it. God lacks nothing and owns everything. All the gold, the silver, the mountain, the water, the beauty, all the galaxies, my God, all the stars which cannot be numbered, too innumerable. God don't need Jesus. material things. Mm. All God asks us for mm. is to worship him. 
in spirit and in truth. Think of it. So I am now learning through David <clears throat> the purpose of true wealth <clears throat> is to honor God. And how we treat wealth will tell us whether we respect and honor God or not. Mm -hmm. So here's Solomon having a public, uh, David having a public discussion with his father in the midst of the assembly before the congregation of the great God. And he tells him this palatial work, you're young, you're inexperienced. Don't wait till you get old, leave the girls. Don't do certain things. It will leave your lives in jeopardy. And he said, with all my resources, I provide for the temple of my God, the gold for the work of gold, the silver, the bronze, the metal. What is it supposed to be used for? Don't put it in NCB. Don't put it in Nova Scotia. Don't put it in the various credit unions and die and leave it. Give it in honor of God. It is not for man, but for God. Do I need anything else tonight? And when we look at all that David left, it was not just silver. It was not just gold. It was not just bronze, but all the iron, the wood, all of the precious stones, and he's going somewhere with it. Hmm? David left it for the work of the Lord. And then he gets down in the same verse, and he said, all of these in large quantities. Why is he saying this? He's not boasting on what he has and telling people what he owns. He's saying, no, all of it, God gave it to me. And I'm giving it back. Then he says, beside in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures. You don't know what David just did. David talk about his corporate. David talk about his family treasures. And David talk about his prized yeah. private. Yeah. What? Things he would have treasured and valued that were given to him are meant something, some worth, some value. He did not attach and associate his heart to it. Wherever a man's heart is, there is his treasure, vice versa. Nothing was too good to give to Nothing God. was too good to give to God. You know why David is coming from? The backside oh, of the wilderness, Jesus. taking care of of his father's sheep. Everybody could have been chosen king in his mm -hmm. household and he was left alone mm -hmm. because it was his responsibility and choice to be a what? A shepherd boy who became king. We've never heard that in human history before, how a shepherd became king and what a king he was, he served. So David continued. And he went down and he said, all of these have I devoted to the temple, the sanctuary of my God. I now give my personal treasury of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. You must know when Solomon turned David out, or David refused to fight his son over the kingdom and shed Jewish blood for Jewish blood. He said, I would rather give up the kingdom. And David gave up the kingdom. It was not the kingdom that David missed the most. It was the worship in the temple of the living God that dwelt in Jerusalem. My God, that he was turned out, nights in the cold, yearned for worship in Jerusalem, in the Thank temple, but was turned a stranger. It was not the throne that he valued more. It was the worship of his God in the temple. And he gave everything. And then he said, 
over and above I have provided for this holy place. And it, you can list the amount now that your treasure is treasured amounts to. From verse 4 through to verse 6, David list the amount. Hmm? 3,000 talents of gold. Gold of Ophir, the best mm -hmm. type of gold. Mm -hmm. And 7,000 talents of refined silver. Not any silver, you know. Mm -hmm. Refined silver. Mm -hmm. For the overlaying of the walls of the buildings. For the gold work and the silver work. And for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. That was the amount. But listen to the next statement. Mm. Thank you for reading that for us. Who... He then, at the end of that dissertation, he says, who is willing, he's now challenging his leaders, yeah. who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? Mm -hmm. First of all, it takes consecration to give. Consecrated giving. Your heart must be separated because you will follow your wealth, follow your giving. So he says, who among us is willing to follow in my footsteps. So David challenged his son Solomon. David challenged his family. David challenged the congregation. But David could never have challenged Solomon, his family, mm -hmm. or the people until he God. set the example. Mm -hmm. You can't tell people, give, 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 and go to church. And you drive in a limo. And you live in a 10 story high building and only you the leader enjoy wealth demonstrate wealth and yet it is the poorest of the poor who makes the richest of the richest rich no that's not god in the kingdom of god he shares all his wealth and precious thing first his son God so loved the world that he gave. Look at how God gave. I, all of the hypocrisy that you see in the world with earthly kings, presidents, prime ministers, premier, chiefs, name them. Whatever they call their leaders in whatever culture and language, they are at the head, the hell. But that's not how God equates and measure his leadership. He sent his son, stoop to the lowest, to the lowest. from the uttermost to the guttermost. Hmm? Earthly leadership is different from kingly, heavenly leadership. So he challenges the people. And it is there for us too. They must know that we are givers. They must see that we are givers. Not by our palatial mansions, not by the cars we drive, not by the things we own. No, that we too, when it comes on to godliness, we are equal at the foot of the cross. Equal mm -hmm. at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. We all need him. Some through the water, some through the flood, but all through the blood. All through the fire, we all need Jesus. So we must practice humility, simplicity, and transparency. Keys to godly leadership. And David continues. What a sermon he preached to his family, to the nation. Who is willing? Then look, verse 6. Then the leaders of families... Look at the order. Families, officers of the tribe of Israel, tribes of Israel, commanders of the thousands and commanders of hundreds and officials in charge of the king's work, they give what? Willingly, sincerely, earnestly. And I pull out my notes and I, I was writing some of the descriptive expressions mm, and I entitled it Fundamentals of Giving. Give illuminatingly. 
give sincerely, give wholeheartedly, give hilariously, give joyously, give graciously, give generously, give cheerfully, give, oh, aloud, give inspiringly, give wholeheartedly, give with a free spirit, give with a willing mind, give with a willing heart, do not give grudgingly. And I could continue with 25 others of these. Hmm? David's God, David knew him, David acknowledged him, and David give with an awareness of godliness in his heart. And David benefited from it. Then we said, giving is the key to living. The quality of your lifestyle, the quality of your living will be imprinted upon the kind of giving you are known for in life. Please, because a man is blind, it doesn't stop him from being blessed. Some of the best composers, artists, people in the earth are blind, but that doesn't stop their ability to give. They can know God. Oh, God. So David challenged the entire nation mm. from all levels. And the Bible says they gave towards the work of the temple of God, 5,000 talents and 10,000 talents, talking gold and silver, the amount they give. And I put this note in my Bible. King David gave his son Solomon the following principles to guide him through life. First Chronicles 18, 9 and 10. The same ideas are the ones that any Christian parent should want to present to their child or children. One, give to know God personally. Mm -hmm. Learn God's commands and discover what he wants you to do. Three, Worship God will wholehearted, with wholehearted devotion. Four, serve God with a willing mind. Five, be faithful in giving, a good steward of what you have, is what you are called to be, a good steward. Six, don't become discouraged by the size of the task that God may assign you. Don't. He knows you, your ability, your capability, what you can do. He knows your capacity more than you do. And if he asks you to do something, he's never going to ask you to do something that he has not already provided you for. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why you were born, to leave a legacy behind and a dimension. It may be found in one of your children. It may be found in just one book or one line of a sentence or a paragraph that you may be called to write. Think of it, but God has something greater for you and I to do than the job of the President of the United States of America. Don't think that the greatest job on earth is to be president. We have seen the failures of so many others. And I will not call names. I don't want to be political. But the greatest job on earth is not to be the monarch of Great Britain. I leave it there. <laughs> so beloved, this is only the introduction of First Chronicles and Chapter 29, David is going to do something 
astonish him. The other verses, eight and nine, the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders. These are the leaders after David, you know, is the leaders. But when the people looked upon the giving and response of their leaders, they rejoiced. For they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David, the king, also rejoiced greatly. Who wouldn't rejoice? When you know you're not the only one. When you know that the leaders set the example for the people. And so the people wept before God. How did David treat this? David penned this psalm. Mm. David's prayer. My David God. said, David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. Same. Praise. Go be ahead, to you. Sister Janet. Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel. From everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. Mm. You are the ruler of all all things in your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all now our god we give you thanks and praise your glorious name my god what a psalm mm. of adoration what a psalm of mm. acknowledgement who does the wealth the honor the riches the power the might the glory the dominion, we are so frail. We have such a limited time on the stage of life, humanity. We are pilgrims passing through. The spotlight will not remain on us for long. Use it well. But somebody always said, be careful of how you desire the spotlight mm -hmm. because everything will be shown up in the light. And if you are not proper and prim, guess what happened? Mm. What you don't want others to see of you in the light will be shown. So use the light well. We are all on a stage. We are several actors and actresses, but guess what happened? We will not occupy center stage forever. Don't be intimidated by debt, but don't get too comfortable with life down here and think that all this wealth I have acquired, accumulated, accrued on my own. No, even wealthy people, their money can't save them. If it could, they wouldn't die and the poor would die. Mm -hmm. But poor persons have lived to a hundred plus years. So it's not wealth, it's the grace, it's the mercy, it's the blessings and provisions of Almighty God. And the issue is, how do we treat this enormous wealth? You don't think you are wealthy? Let, let me put it this way. One human being's body is worth over $6 billion. Your eyes, if one go bad, <laughs> your nostrils, if something were to happen, what would you do? Call in the expert. There's an expert for every part. Of every the part. And the truth is they spend years studying and upgrading their skills just to perfect their art. And still, they can't go beyond God. But look at it this way. You are so valuable. You are beyond the prices of rubies. Think about what's the value of a human kidney. List one body part. The heart. What is the value the brain. of a heart, a brain? Talk, talk to me. Blood. You are so 
valuable. You are so important. You can't commit suicide. You're too valuable. You are here to set creation free. God Almighty sent his son to earth to redeem you, mankind, because of how valuable you are. What does it profit a man to gain this old world and to lose his one soul? Do you know that you are more valuable than the stars in the skies, than those skyscrapers, those waterfalls and wonders of the earth? If you begin to think of how valuable God made you, every strand of hair on your head cannot be reproduced by a machine on earth. It's not the same texture. It's not the same worth or quality. And when God made you, he spared nothing to make you most lavished. You are the sixth day wonder of God. If you're thinking of doing something to yourself because you're not lovely, you're not beautiful, you're not happy anymore. Life, you don't want to continue. Stop and think. How beautiful, how handsome am I? How valuable am I? Because God made you in his image and God made you in his likeness. Sister Jennifer, would you like to say something? Yes, Bishop. This verse that you... Um spoke about it is found in verse 5 at the end of verse 5 chapter 29 chapter it? 29 yes. of first chronicles after david spoke about the amount of silver and gold that he had given mm -hmm. and he asked the question no who is willing to consecrate himself today to the lord that's the question mm -hmm. and you said a man will not give unless he's consecrated. Yes. That stands out to me because over the years, I've seen that. Mm. Consecration is the setting apart of oneself unto the Lord. For God's use. For God's use. Mm -hmm. When a man or a woman is consecrated, mm -hmm. their money follows their consecration. Yes. When a man's heart is not devoted to the Lord, mm -hmm. their money will not come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They will be stingy to the Lord. I've seen wealthy people come inside of the church and give the Lord, tip the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they give a thousand dollars, they talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I would shake my head because it, it is, I am dumbstruck. But then I realized that God has to do a further work yes. on the heart. Yes. And I've seen very poor people, very poor people, I mean, having menial, doing menial work. Mm -hmm. They fast, they pray, they love God with all their heart. They're totally devoted. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. I am, I am. I am so afraid to ask those people for money because I know they'll take up what they don't have and give you. Once they hear that it's for the church, they will sell their goat. Uh -huh. They will sell something that they will give. They will throw partner yes. and give. Listen, you will be ashamed if you take money. You will almost, almost want to say, take back some. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? It's me hold my heart. You understand me? And then it makes you want to be so careful with the use of what comes in from mm -hmm. God's people. Mm -hmm. Those people are consecrated. They are poor, but they are consecrated. Mm -hmm. They will give, they will give everything. And those are the people. I, I've seen it over the years. You know, those are the people. God look out for their children. God spared them from sicknesses and diseases. I can't even begin to tell you mm -hmm. what I've seen. Experience teaches knowledge. Mm -hmm. I have seen it. Oh, God honors preparation and devotion. I have seen it. Thank you, Jesus. Consecration is the key. If you consecrate yourself, you will give. 
If you are not consecrated, you will be mean to the Lord. No matter yeah. what the Lord do for you, yes. it's, it's not enough. Yes. You always want more. And yes. you're so not you are so not joyful, you can't even enjoy mm -hmm. what God has given to you. Oh God. And then the poor man goes to bed and sleep well. Because he gave it his beloved. He gives his beloved sweet sleep. And he's not thinking about who's coming to break down his door to steal from him because he knows that he don't have anything. Mm -hmm. He's going to get up tomorrow morning and wonder what he's going to eat. <laughs> so, consecration. And we're not saying that God takes pleasure in keeping keep anyone, anyone in poverty. We're not saying that. But he wants to deliver us from things. As a matter of fact, right now, mm -hmm. I just want to pray with all of us. Your child may be faced with a divorce. Yes, your loving child. Your child may have some challenge of sort. Your child may be faced with a car loan problem, a mortgage problem, a financial with a challenge, lawsuit. with a lawsuit, mm, name it. With imprisonment. I was talking to a member this morning, and the person reminded me that the curses that works in a reverse way. They only last up to the fourth and fifth generation, the duration of the curses. But the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add it no sorrow works to a thousand generation. My God. The blessings of the Lord far outweighs the curse. So I remember this song. As we talk about consecrated giving, pray with me. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace. Be thou. Let my soul, let my soul look up. With a steadfast love, and thy will be lost in God. Jesus. Pray, Jennifer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to be able to give to you. Lord, what we purpose to give to you is only what you have given to us. For all things are yours. All things. And by you all con things consist and have their being. In you we live and move mm. and have, have our being. Yes, Lord. Lord, you wake us up every day. Lord, you cause our limbs to move, mm. thoughts to enter our mind. Jesus. Your word declare that there is not a thought that enters our mind mm. that you do not know all together. Yes, Lord. What an awesome God yes, you Lord. are. You also declare that we are fearful oh, and wonderfully made. Yes. Marvelous are the works of your hands. Mm. How can we refrain from giving you what belongs to you? Yes. How can we, my God, be miserly towards you? Mm. How can we keep back, my God, from being co-workers, oh, co-laborers in the kingdom of God? How can we not, my God, be faithful in building your house, in Jesus. giving towards the work of the sanctuary. Oh, David oh, had a revelation of you and of your presence, of your glory. My God, Hallelujah. he desired to build you a house. Yes. But you, mighty God, said you would build David a house. Oh, mighty God. Yes. When we build for you, my God, you have already had... You already have in your heart yes, what you want Lord. to do for us. Oh God, to sustain not Lord, only Lord, us, Lord. but our children after us. 
to give them hope and a future, oh, to establish Jesus. their peace, that no weapon formed against them no uh, can prosper, that no curse uh, shall, shall be able to stand or work against them, oh, mighty God. Oh, yes. That no demonic infestation or oppression shall be able to come upon them. Jesus. That no suicide will be able to overtake them. No suicidal thoughts will be able to overtake them. Oh, My God, and cause Jesus. them to take their lives. My God, the oppressor shall not ride upon oh. their backs or the yoke shall be upon their necks, mighty God. Jesus. But they shall be the head and not the, not tail. the tail. Above only right. and they shall not be hungry, but even in famine, they shall be full and plenty. My God, they shall live in houses that they have not built. They shall eat of trees which they have not planted. Hallelujah. The locust, my God, shall not overtake their harvest. Jesus. Mighty God, hallelujah. Oh, and their pasture land and their livestock oh, and, and their wealth will not be consumed by aliens and by others, my God. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, we thank you for the opportunity. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, of putting our hands to the task Jesus. of building. We praise your holy name yes. for your mercy endure it forever. Yes, we thank you mighty God of all the wealth Hallelujah. and the earth that you have given us oh God a portion to give back to you. So you give to us so we give to you yes, joyfully cheerfully, gleefully my God we give hilariously. We give mighty God. Oh hallelujah Hallelujah, mighty God, we yes. give up out of the abundance of what you have supplied unto us, Lord God, Lord Jesus Christ. Others will not come and give and take out the blessing from our hands and from the hands of our offspring. Yes, strangers will be joined to you, my God, and will be able to give, but you want us to be partakers of the harvest. Yes, you want us to be partakers of the abundance that will come of those who cooperate with you. My God, mm. my God. Solomon became uh, the wealthiest man in all the earth. My God, my God, my God, my God. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Because he was faithful in the building of mm. your house. Hallelujah. May we be found faithful. May we be found faithful. May we be found faithful yes. in doing the work. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And right now I speak over you. Your daughters and your sons, our daughters and our sons, Jesus. will marry in due season. Mm. They will marry godly men and godly women. They will not marry Jesus. man to man, woman to woman, or man to beast. Those curses are broken My over God. them. I speak supernatural death cancellation mm. over your household and family and generations of children. They will be debt free. Jesus. I break spiritual embargoes over their lives. Yes. And I command the wealth of God to run them down, to pursue them mm. and to wait for them at the streets above. I break every money curses over mm. them. Poverty and other curses, pronounced curses, self-inflicted curses, spoken curses, mm. word curses My are God. broken over them. I release them into the abundance of prosperity and wealth. I decree that the covenants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be upon your household, my household, and our children. They will know no curses. They will come into seasons of blessings and prosperity. They will be the head and not the tail above always and never beneath. I decree sickness and untimely death will not take them oh, out of oh, here yes, before destiny and purpose is fully realized. Mm -hmm. I decree right now what they have dreamt to be and to grow up to be as a child is released and given expression to. I decree that the ungodly will not rejoice over the godly. I decree that we will not envy the godly, the ungodly the for ungodly. what they have. But like David, 
a day in your courts is better hey. than a thousand hey. years. And I decree that the righteous now excel, pursue, mm. advance, and recover all that is in their purpose and within their destiny. I decree that all of our children that are to be married will be married. Ah, and that they will not worry and they will mm. not fret and they will not fear and doubt and come into the realm of the stead of the unbelief. I pray over this microphone and on this platform tonight blessings follow the righteous peace follow them every document that is pending to be signed to release them into their future present and purpose be done so now and the ungodly will not rejoice over the godly I speak it and I release it mm. because they obey the blessing plan of God they God. set the resources of God aside they sow seeds now in this season of sowing. Oh, and first fruits and harvest aside. And they live consecrated, giving consecrated, living because they know that all wealth belongs to God and God alone. So we thank you, Father, and we praise you for tonight's Bible study that it goes above mm -hmm. and beyond. One thing is spoken, but many things are heard and they begin to be realized now in the homes and hearts and lives of the saints, of the believers, and kingdom pursue them and overtake them in the name of Jesus and deliver them mm -hmm. safely on the other side. Thank you, Lord. We decree it is so. Yes. And it cannot be otherwise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us see who we have online with us tonight as we welcome you as a part of our study. Any questions, any statements, anything that you want to acknowledge, talk to us. Who is with us, Lady Tracy? Okay. I'm not hearing sorry, it. My, sorry, my my microphone was, I was trying to get my microphone. Okay. All right. So on, on, on Zoom, we have Lady Andrea, Elder Annette Jones, A.W., Brother Lennon, Mr. Elicio, Elsie, Faye Parks, Georgia Matthews, Heather Bradshaw, Judith Hall, Judith Serdar, Marlene Simpson, Peter Gay Kelly, Ricardo Knight, Dr. Rodney Taylor. Oh, Sue bless Peter, God, my friend. And Tamiro. Hallelujah. On Facebook, on Facebook, we have We have Mar Elder Marjorie Daniels, Marlene Brown, Persia da Costa, Sylvia Baptiste, Audley Matthews. Uh, that's all I'm seeing. I don't know if Pastor Jennifer sees anybody else. Deaconess Isilda Owens, uh, Pastor Rika Francis. Uh, uh, did you say Elder Marjorie Daniels? Yes, mm. and there were so, some in the, the first part there, but they've slid off my purview right now. Alga. Praise God, yes. Yes, Lady Alga is with Marlene us. Marlene Brown, yes. Uh, Marlene, Marlene, Marlene Brown. Marlene Brown. Yes. Praise God. Well, praise God. Mm -hmm. Who will make a statement? Who will participate in one way or another? I must say this. And your children's school fee right up to university is paid up. Come on, embrace that. Take Thank that. God. If that that's fits for you, that's Amen. for somebody out there. Amen. Their fees are paid up. Amen. I receive it if anybody. I receive that. <laughs> oh my God. We Anyone that wants to this, say anything, you okay. can recognize who is online more than we can. We don't see everything. Dr. Rodney, we hug and love on you, your wife, your family, all the children. They are our children as well. And our children are your children. We want to hear from you if you're 
able to speak, Dr. Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Come on, who will be the first? Open your mics, raise your hands. Yes. Go ahead and speak, put in the chat. Mar Elder Marjorie says, the righteous shall expand, advance, and multiply. Amen. Amen. So be it. Amen. Amen. Come on, speak it, beloved. Utter it. Proclaim it. Announce it. Decree it. Come on, saints, this is Bible studies. We want to hear from you. I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> you have a lot of revelations in your mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's make it interactive and therapeutic. You know. Good, good night, brothers and sisters. Good night, Bishop. Good night, Brother Lennon. Good yes, night. sir. I embraced strongly the encouraging word that you give us um, pertaining giving to the house of the Lord and to God people also. I want to share a, a brief um, testimony. Yes. In the past, I usually run a company and um, many of the weeks when I collect my like a salary, I would give it to the ministry or give it to a brethren because I did have other work on the side. And to a point where there were some people who were saying to me, you're a Santa Claus or something, man. <laughs> Why you not have sense or something? But I could not help it, man of God. Okay. I, I was just giving, giving, giving. And uh, I lost that job, start my business and my business make a dip and so forth. Financially, I could not afford to pay my rent. Mm. And God give me favor in that house. Yes. I live in that house for four years and six months without paying a dollar. Praise you, be? Jesus. Who could that be? <laughs> and then after, God uses the same family to put me to another place mm. where I live over four years My again. God without paying rent. So I say this to say that when you are a giver, there's absolutely no man at all can stop you. Amen. That's my few words. Thank you, sir. So Amen. it's filtering down to every one of us. Somebody else, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have anyone on your uh, line, Lady Jennifer, that is making a comment? Um, Elder Madre says, overflow, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. She also says, when we build your house, Lord, you build ours, my God. Thank you you raise us up as lively stones. Mm. The righteous shall expand, advance, and multiply. Pastor David Johnson says, blessings and greetings, Bishop. Bless you, Pastor. Praise God. One of the things that um that that um, came out of the teaching tonight is um the giving of the the leaders. Mm -hmm. The leaders took the lead. Yes. In the giving process. Yes. Because David set the example. Set the example. He called the leaders together. Mm -hmm. The commanders of the thousands, the commanders yes. of the hundreds, yes. the tribal leaders, the, the, the people saw yes. that the leaders gave right. and there was great rejoicing. Mm -hmm. So I believe it freed up yes, it did. other people to yes. give. Yes. And you, you said something that, um, okay, so it's not just leaders who should prosper. Mm -mm. And everybody else at one level not prospering. No. Because when God is going to bless, He wants to bless His people right yes. across the board. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's important. That's important. So leaders must take the lead and give, not just some leaders. And we know in, in the body of Christ right now that um, some leaders only want to take, they know nothing about giving. 
and that's a big problem. Amen. But that's abuse. Yes. There is abuse in the system. Yes. In in fathers in fathers house. And we have to call it out when we speak. Amen. But that's not God's order. God's order is for the leaders to be an example to the flock. Yes. In giving, in living, lifestyle, everything. Hallelujah. When you take the lead, the, the, the people will see and will follow. Amen. Any other words there? <laughs> Let's deal with the generational blessings. Your children children's children sometimes we stop at the children because they seem to be the present and the most immediate mm. but let us stretch the generational lineage abraham isaac jacob and it went on and it went on to joseph and it went on to joseph's children mm. in the switching crossing of the hands, Ephraim, talk to me. We are pronouncing over you. There will be no lack in your generation. Oh, they will Jesus. grow from strength to strength, mm. from wealth to wealth. And the seed of the righteous will be blessed. They will not go a begging. Mm. We cut off every sickness, every disease and disease we cut off begging and borrowing we render poverty broken jesus. smashed My crushed God. in the name of jesus, name of jesus. no fear jesus. of failure no fear that you will start and not finish no fear that death will take you out of here and any rush or ace we cripple and cramp and paralyze. We neutralize and turn back the hand of wickedness. And we stop sickness, virus. We pray that everything that set you back in COVID, you would receive sevenfold, double for your trouble. We pray that every type of Job-like illness Jesus. that wipe out mm. your family, your family's wealth, that come, come against you. your body to mm. paralyze and cripple your mind. No paralysis of the mind will take you over. We come against every comatose spirit that has come to make you sleep whilst you should work and enjoy life. And we speak a shake-up now in your resources, in your inheritance, in your generational blessing being passed on successfully to your children's children's children in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. And that whatever God gives you, as David said to Solomon, youthfulness, ah, and inexperience, inexperience. Don't let it, stop you. it wouldn't stop you and My slow God. you down. Mm. And David said, it's doable. It can be, it can be done. David said, it must be fulfilled. No matter what setback has come against you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid for. But that God causes you to ride upon the clouds oh and the winds and give the wind a mighty voice so that your voices would be heard. It is doable at this time. Here is the verse ending I was looking for. David says, be strong and do the work of the Lord. Yes. It's not how you feel. It's not how you look. You're not surrendering. You're not giving up. You're not retiring either. You're only refiring tonight. We speak that over all love and faith's leaders, over all love and faith networks and networking uh, persons locally and abroad. In Jesus' name, Jesus. it's done. It's done. Any questions, any statements?
If not, go ahead, Sister Teresa. Someone is speaking, Doctor. Doctor is that Rodney. Doctor Rodney? Yes. I see his photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Speak to us. Bless us. Hello, Bishop and Jennifer. Uh, I just yes, wanted to just have a brief comment. Uh, this is a very timely message, very important message that you are sharing with us on this in this time in this period. You know, looking at what's going on, you know, globally, uh, inflation, famine, mm. all these things are taking place. But it struck a note with me, hit me dead in my spirit when you talked about consecrated giving. Mm. Even in the time of famine, you can still reap a hundredfold. Thank you, Jesus. That no matter what's going on globally, worldwide, there's a whole nother economy for the kingdom. Yes. And the, and the economic principles of the kingdom work no matter what's going on or what you what we're experiencing in the world system we gotta mm -hmm. sow into the kingdom system and reap from the kingdom system the thing that struck me was that with consecrated giving it leads to corporate blessings mm -hmm. on the house yes so as you multiply the consecrated givers the house yes feels it, the house recedes from it. There's a corporate blessing that sits on the house as okay. you cultivate consecrated givers. Just a little tidbit from me, just wanted to acknowledge the mighty powerful message that was shared on tonight. We thank love you. Bless you both. Bless you. bless you too, and thank you for the principles you taught us in financial dominion, taught us as a nation, taught us as love and faith and the body of Christ, taught us in our household of the Owens. You came among us, lived and stayed in our humble abode, stayed in our small grouping and blessed our congregants with those concepts and principles. The manuals are still alive but the principles lives on in our hearts. And you do have treasure. You have labored tears, sweat and blood. You have brought your families on more than one occasion, all the way from California to Jamaica, and you have sowed seeds. And those seeds are now becoming a harvest. And we speak that back into you and your wife, Apostle Sharon, we speak that into your children and their children's children, and you are a part of Missions Jamaica. We have started, sir, the, the sanctuary, hallelujah, for global outreach, and we'll be moving into a section of it no later than September of this year, and we are praying, God, that he has already open the doors for you to come and be a part of that time of celebration when our feet will step into the promises of God having been made years ago and those seeds that you have sowed into us and enabling this to be a reality right now. Thank you. Father, I speak Yes, Lord. I speak over the Taylors, Dr. Taylor, his wife, Dr. Sharon Taylor. Speak over their children, all three of them, that they'll be the head and not the tail, above always and never beneath. I thank you for the doors of nations that continue to be open, that their work, their material, their literature, their messages will go into Africa. Lord, South and Central and Latin America in places like Brazil. Lord, I pray over them that their work will make room for them yes, and their gifts would open doors before kings and great men of the earth. Amen. 
Oh God, I pray that their labor of love in prayer and study for and in the nations, oh God, would take root and you would fulfill the promises that you have made unto them and they will see their children, oh God, rise up before them mm. in a place of power, grace and dominion before their eyes be closed. And Lord, when their time shall have come, they will make such a transition. And they will say, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. Oh, bless them, bless their voice. And give, oh God, the wind a mighty voice and cause your name to be promoted and elevated in all the earth. We bless them, we anoint them, their limbs, their joints, their vision, their words, their hearing, their capacity, their wealth, you would endorse and promote. Bless them. Bless them, I pray. And Lord, when is your timing to bring them back? Do that again and bless them. No lack, no need. They would not lack for anything and need for anything. Grant them wisdom beyond their years, almighty God. And remember the seeds sown in Southern California. Remember the churches raised up and the ministry, oh God, that came about as a result of them. Remember them now in Florida, oh God. And for however long you'll have them there and whatever you have in their lives, yet accomplished to be accomplished, we bless them yes, and we Lord. thank you for them. Yes, and may they see seeds of greatness and success in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Bless the children. Erica. Bless the children. Jonathan. Erica. Jonathan. Jesus. Oh, bless the and children. Ryan. And Ryan. Bless Jesus. them and bless Thank you, Lord. their loins. We pray mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, wherever they are right now, mm -hmm. touch them and reinvigorate their lives. Mm -hmm. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have run out of time, but not out of words. I want you to raise your hands, love and faith. Raise your hands wherever you are. Lord, we speak life and eternal covering over the brethren. Bless their homes. Bless their families. Bless their children, sons and daughters. Bless their grandchildren. Bless the ministers of the household of love and faith. Remember the Rileys, oh God, and their family. Remember Dr. Ben McLean and his family. Remember Lord, the Gariks and their family. Remember Prophet and his family. Oh, God, remember the elders, Marjorie, Annette. Oh, God, remember the Johnsons in the name of Jesus Christ and their children. Remember the Baileys and their children. Oh, God Almighty, we lift up our leaders and leadership before you. Men and women of God, men and women of faith. Remember the Scots. Pastor Scott and his wife, Margaret. Oh, remember Pastor Biggs and his household. Remember Lord Jesus Christ, the leadership of love and faith. You have blessed us with great men and great women. Oh God of resource and substance, bless them. May there be no lacking in their lives. Lord, remember the household of faith, the mm. leaders, the followers. Oh, bless their homes and family. Preserve them from debt and sickness and setback. And just because they have had setback, let it not be a time of, to step back, but to step forward. Recover, repair, heal, and be restored. The Lord bless you, love and faith. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
the Lord raise up and lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Bless the hires in Toronto. Oh, bless the Morris in New York. Bless Rose in UK. Bless, bless, bless Bishop James Robinson and Bishop Taylor in Toronto. Heal their bodies, their lives, and heal their ministries and do a new work. Remember Helder sister Sonia Hyde and Stafford Hyde. Remember the household of the Hyde's family and bless them with a divine supernatural visitation. Lord, we put them before you. We lift up Nedita, Emmanuel, Gabriel, JDL, and Judah. Bless their households and bless their lives. Bless the lives of all our spiritual children and pray that they would exceed and excel us, Lord, in ministry. We commit them to you and pray for your hand of blessing over them and upon them. And your will be done and kingdom come. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I'm down there. Amen. Beloved, God bless you. We love you, Jennifer and I, and hoping to see you as early as possible. God be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Love Amen. you.